Are you listening? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Report, your go-to source for all the week's gaming news. Nerfed into one show once a week, so you can worry less about reading the news and get back to playing those video games. And on this week's episode, Cyberpunk's online multiplayer mode has officially been confirmed. The next Splinter Cell may have been leaked by GameStop. Death Stranding is getting a very easy mode. And Nintendo holds a Nintendo Direct to end all directs. But before we get into any of that, your top headlines. Top headlines. First up this week, CD Projekt Red the studio that has brought you games like The Witcher. And do we really need to say anything else? Because they made the frickin' Witcher series. Well, luckily for us, CD Projekt Red is not done, because their latest game, Cyberpunk 2077, is destined to be absolutely groundbreaking. Cyberpunk 2077 will take place in a dystopian future filled with cybernetic enhancements, Keanu Reeves, and multiplayer. That's right, this week on Twitter, CD Projekt Red finally confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077 will feature multiplayer. CD Projekt Red tweeted, Until now, the only thing we've said about multiplayer was that it was in R&D. As we're getting closer to launching single-player Cyberpunk 2077 in April 2020, we'd like to confirm that multiplayer's in the works. The plan for now is to deliver Cyberpunk 2077 in April, then follow up with DLC, free, and single-player content. And once we're done, invite you for some multiplayer action. Splinter Cell, one of the biggest rumors going into this year's E3 was that Ubisoft was going to announce the next chapter in Splinter Cell. But of course, nothing was announced. However, this week, someone at GameStop may have just leaked the next Splinter Cell game. And for those of you keeping track at home, that is officially three leaks in the last two weeks for GameStop. It's no Walmart Canada, but keep it up, GameStop. You might just get there. In a now removed product listing for the replica of Splinter Cell goggles, GameStop wrote, For the first time since the introduction of Splinter Cell in 2002, after nine top-selling AAA titles with the 10th release on the horizon, this is your first chance to own Sam Fisher's signature ultra-high-frequency sonar goggles. Now, this product listing is the first time that we have received official confirmation of a 10th Splinter Cell game. And honestly, this could just be an overly ambitious employee, or perhaps one of the largest video game retailers in the world knows something that we don't, that Ubisoft is about to announce the next chapter in Splinter Cell. Marvel's Avengers is releasing in May of 2020, but this week, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics gave gamers a first look at some of the new alternate Avengers costumes coming to the game. The new alternate costumes include Captain America's Secret Empire outfit. And if you weren't aware, Secret Empire was a comic series when Captain America was evil and a Hydra loyalist. But don't worry, that's not all. We also got a brief look at the Incredible Hulk as the Grey Hulk, also known as Joe Fixit. Now, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics have both confirmed that they are working on multiple alternate outfits for every hero in the game that will be on sale post-launch. Well, folks, mark your calendars because we are officially eight weeks away from the release of Death Stranding. Oh, hail Hideo Kojima. And despite not knowing exactly what this game might be, we do know one thing. If you suck at video games, this might just be the game for you. Hideo Kojima posted on Twitter this week, Normally, there's only easy mode, but we added very easy mode for movie fans since we have real actors like Norman, Mods, Leah Starden. Even Yano-san, who never completed the first stage of Pac-Man, was able to complete the game on very easy mode. Wow, real actors. You know, somewhere Nolan North is like crying in his shower, eating ice cream out of a tub, just being like, Kojima said I wasn't a real actor. Ah! 
Kojima's personal assistant Ayako expanded upon the announcement by saying, Finish Death Stranding test play. It took a month as I was playing while doing daily work since August 6th. As being a beginner, I picked very easy mode. According to my boss, this mode is for people who usually don't play games, movie fans or RPG fans. Normal or hard mode is for action game fans. Damn! Kojima is ruthless this week. First calling out fake actors and then saying RPG fans can't even play a simple normal mode? Man, can't wait to see what he tweets next. He's gonna be like, there's a reason we chose PlayStation over Xbox. We actually wanted people to play our video games. And with that, that wraps up this week's top headlines. So without further ado, it is time for the rundown. Now for something completely different Yeah. Nintendo. This week, Nintendo held another Nintendo Direct. And to be honest, this Direct felt a lot like E3. Like, it was 40 minutes long, and Nintendo was clearly just swinging for the fences. During this week's Direct, Nintendo gave an update on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pokemon Sword and Shield, along with announcing tons of new features and new games coming to the Nintendo Switch. New games like Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Witcher 3, Tetris 99 Invictus Mode, Doom 64, Deadly Premonition 2, Super Kirby Clash, Little Town Hero, and a HD remake of Trials of Mana. But Nintendo also used this Direct as an opportunity to announce the world's best worst kept secret. Overwatch is officially coming to the Nintendo Switch. That's right, starting October 15th, Blizzard's Battle Arena game in all of its glory will find a new home on the Nintendo Switch. The Overwatch Legendary Edition will include a limited time Noir Widowmaker skin and three months of Nintendo Switch Online. But enough of things that we already knew, let's talk about Heartbreak. When you try <laughs> Sorry. Pokemon Sword and Shield. This week's Direct highlighted four new features coming to Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. First up, Pokemon's in-game character customization has received an overhaul. Traders can now customize their looks with new outfits, accessories, unique hairstyles, or even makeup. But while you're pampering yourself, why not pamper your Pokemon too with Pokemon Camp? Trainers can now interact and play with your Pokemon at any time in the game. You can now feed, play, fetch, or even tickle your Tyranitar. I mean, there's nothing else I love to do more in this world than just tickling my Tyranitar. But hey, let's face it. After years of collecting hundreds of Pokemon, why not test your skills out in a new gym? The kitchen. That's right. In Sword and Shield, trainers can now cook rice and curry. With over a hundred different recipes, trainers can now collect ingredients on their travels and cook meals for them and their Pokemon. <sighs> now, it wouldn't be a Sword and Shield Direct without playing my new favorite game. Who's that Pokemon? What the f*** is that? Allow me to introduce you to Poltegeist, a tea kettle ghost with a special ability called Weak Armor. You know, for battles where you need weak armor. But that's not the only Pokemon we were introduced to. Meet Cramorant, a flying water type Pokemon with a massive appetite. When Cramorant uses Surf or Dive, it reappears with a fish in its mouth. If it receives any damage while eating that fish, it'll spit it in your face with an ability called Gulp Missile immediately causing damage to opponents. So let me just get this straight. We go from Charizard and Blastoise to a possessed tea kettle and a pelican that vomits on you. Cool. Now, Pokemon aside, this week's Nintendo Direct did include the massive announcement of a new feature coming to the Nintendo Switch Online. Finally, over 20 classic Super Nintendo games will be available to all Nintendo Switch Online subscribers. Games like Super Mario Kart, Star Fox, Super Metroid, and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island are available right now. 
And if you're a subscriber to Nintendo Switch Online, you now have access to a wireless classic Super Nintendo Switch controller for $29.99 US dollars. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate might be the most popular game on the Nintendo Switch right now. And this Direct gave us two new announcements for that game. Two new announcements, including the arrival of a new in-game hero, Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury. Terry Bogard is the latest DLC character to be added to the game and will be available on November of 2019, leaving one final hero for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Season 1. However, Nintendo did confirm that more DLC characters are still under development at Nintendo right now. And finally for this week, we come to that noise, of course, signifies that we are running out of time and coming close to the end of the show. So in order to cover all the week's remaining news, we must initiate a segment that I like to call... Every single week, we have so much news to talk about and so little time to do it. So we take all the week's remaining news, put 60 seconds on the clock, and try to cover it as fast as humanly possible without running out of breath, passing out, or got it! So with that in mind, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. Fucking noise! And go. Batista is coming to Gears 5 next month. Days Gone is getting a new Game Plus mode. Assassin's Creed Discovery will drop next week. Red Dead Online's latest update, including Pursuits, will go live next week. We got our first look at Ukulele's Impossible Lair, which will be launching in 2019. Uh, big news! We are getting a sequel to the Tomb Raider movie starring Alisa Vikander. Absolutely love her. Love to have her on the show. If, you, if she follows us somehow, please come on the show. Uh, Dauntless is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Concrete Genie has officially gone gold. We're getting brand new Celeste DLC next week. Rumor has it that PlayStation is currently working on PlayStation's All-Star Battle Royale 2 for the PlayStation 5. And finally for this week, Nintendo issued a brand new patent for hinged Joy-Cons. You heard that correctly. Hinged Joy-Cons. Still no voice chat, but we're getting hinged Joy-Cons. That is it for Nerfed in 60 Seconds, and that is it for this week's episode of the show. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Preferably, Elisa Vacando. As always, my name is Brian Chappelle. You are you, and this has been the Nerf Report. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks so much for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw and you want to see more content just like it, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down below. Rumor has it, if you hit that subscribe button at the right time, you may be awarded $1 million. But it's not everyone. It's one random lucky subscriber. So, go ahead. Hit it.